is up guys, it's your boy Blanky Speed here, and today we're gonna be talking about the S tier support position 4, and that is Shadow Shaman. We're going to be following Eki, who is ranked 23 in Europe as a support player. So all you supports who are yapping saying, I can't gain MMR, I'm a support player. It's just not true. There's 9 class, there's Snake King, there's Eki, right? There are plenty of support players. There's Schofield, there's Ducalis, there's like literally, I mean, there's more cores, let's be fair, right? It is slightly harder, okay? Slightly harder, I'll give you that. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. We're going to be watching Shadow Shaman here today. So let's get into the landing stage. So first things first, incredible armor, incredible damage, horrible movement speed, 305. This is with a wind lace, 285 base movement speed. That is why the build on that Eki is going is what I'd recommend every single game. Yes, there's probably games where you'd want to stick if you're against PA or something like that. But wind lace, two branches, blood grenade, fairy fire, and tangos. Uh, this is going to put you up to a very comfortable 720 health. Your starting skill should always be Aether Shock, unless you're going for First Blood, which he did. Unfortunately, he died for it. So not only did he feed First Blood, now he has Shackle in lane, which is pretty terrible. You do not want Shackle because you want Aether Shock for this exact scenario. Aether Shock at level one does 140 damage, which is just below half health on range creeps, and it hits three targets. So often you can zap both heroes and the range creep at the same time which is incredibly high value in what you should be aiming for. Unfortunately, the point in Shackle really coming to bite him here. Uh, it's also more mana than Aether Shock. Like there's never really a game or a lane in which you want Shackle. Now, in terms of Shackle usage in the laning stage, the main thing I would say is actually try to wait for level three. It doubles the damage, right? It doesn't mean you can't use it early on. And he actually has used multiple Shackles, primarily just as a follow-up to Pudge Rot, right? He hasn't used it in combination with Hook, However, that is something they also have and is something he will do here, right? So they have this really cool combo, very basic combo, but strong of shackle and a hook. Uh, and yeah, it's very, very effective. So this lane is really good. This Pudge Shaman a a combo is super nasty. Uh, and now when you hit level three, shackle becomes one of the best abilities in the game. Not only is it a three second stun, if not canceled, which frankly in the laning stage rarely will be the case. It's, it's pretty easy to not get it canceled. You get 150 damage and 150 heal. Yeah, Shackle heals you guys. And so if someone is low, I'm sorry, if you are low, you can just throw out a Shackle to heal. It will deal damage and, as I said, heal you. So in a clip like here, honestly, I don't mind the idea of just him Shackling the Void. In fact, I'm almost surprised he didn't do it earlier. I guess he knew that he could wait and they would get the kill. I, I, if he knew that, like that the Void would overcommit like that, like I can't believe the Void did what he did there. But if he knew that that would happen, I mean, that is insane. Like th that was so good that he held it, but you can just toss it out earlier than he did there uh, in many exchanges just to get some damage and heal. Like a 300 damage exchange of health is insane. Uh, that's why these safe shackles are definitely good. From there, in terms of items, clarity and boots, uh, stick is definitely good. In fact, I'm surprised he doesn't have a stick. I think he, there's a lot of high MR players that play with the mindset of like buy greedy items. I get it. You know what I mean? There's definitely a justification for just getting early boots. It lets you close the gap for Shackle and kite the rocket barrage as we see another <laughs> such a stupid combo. It's so stupid. Then at level four, you're going to take sheep. And at this point of the game, your hero becomes kind of weak. Uh, the bad cast ranges of Shackle and Hex become very apparent in the early game. You essentially have to just look for openings of people that are isolated, um, right? There's not much you can do though after that like just play the winning lane the key to shaman is you have the sables play the winning lane so like playing the void lane is okay if the void was low it would be particularly good they could really try to kill the void from full but a lot of the time there's just not going to be too much to do on this hero and this is the case for a lot of supports it's totally fine if there's a stacks to be made um if there's a wisdom rune to be taken if there's a, a rune to be taken don't feel bad about not doing anything just play the important objectives around the map and look for the winning lane. So the next play that's like really obvious on Shaman and has been the case for literally forever is taking tier ones. There's two use cases for Shaman ulti in the early game. It's towers and heroes. Later on, the third option becomes Roshan, right? So don't be afraid. If the tower is like full HP, drop it. If the tower's low, maybe then hold on to it, right? This is how I'd be looking at it. But if it's a high health tower, don't be afraid to just kind of drop that ulti. 
and take the tower from full. I mean, these shaman wards evaporate. As long as you have a creep wave, you need a creep wave. As long as you have a creep wave, you'll take the tower from full. Now, in terms of skill build, some people might be thinking, oh, speed, why in the world would you not max hex, right? It makes the damage amplification go from 10 to 25%. And while that is very insane, like if you guys don't understand hex, this ability when someone is hexed takes extra damage and you can amp that with your 10 talent by an extra 10%. You can make someone take 35% more damage. That is a ridiculous number, ridiculous number. And later on, it is ridiculous. The thing is level one hex is two seconds, max hex is 2.9. It scales very poorly in terms of duration. And so it's just not worth it compared to an ability like shackles which nearly doubles right instead of being less than half like hex it nearly doubles and the damage and heal scales incredibly well uh, on top of that it's just your ability that's going to let you solo kill people with serpent wards in the early game right if you catch someone out with max hex with serpent wards yeah you're going to amp the damage but the duration is just not long enough and so the max shackle is going to be your best way to get kills with the Serpent Wars. So definitely every single game, I would suggest a 1-1-4 build into a 1-4-4 build, maxing Hex second, taking your 10 talent um, at level 11. You can take it at 10, but I would recommend just skilling up the Hex and then taking the talent at 11. Now we're gonna see a smoke play here and I really like Eki's execution. It's nothing flashy, it's nothing crazy. The Dazzle gets gone on, uh, Dismember comes out. He's very patient, follows up with the Hex at the end of the Dismember. Dazzle ends up dying, so a really nice play there. And I love what he does here. No panic, drops the shackle, getting gone on. Once again, no panic, drops the ulti, pops the fairy fire. Could have popped this wand, probably wouldn't have mattered. The bash of the deep would have killed him anyway. But yeah, gets the serpent wards out. And look at the value of the serpent wards on the gyro. Boom, ton of damage. And you want to put it on ranged heroes because melee heroes take way less damage from serpent wards due to their innate stout shield block, right? So uh, really good at killing ranged heroes. And yeah, just, it really does a lot of damage. And that's why it's so important. It did nearly half of the health of Gyrocopter and that helps them take him out without feeding away a return kill on the punch. So just good execution, perfect chain stun, no panic, just getting his spells out in the bad situation. So getting into the mid game, uh, he interestingly enough left Shackles at level three and then Max Hex. So at level 10, he would have the Max Hex plus damage amp uh, synergy, which makes a lot of sense. And I actually really like this skill build. It makes a lot of sense too. So in terms of going for solo kills, he gets yoinked here, but you can solo kill any support. And that's what I want you guys to keep in mind. Once you have blink, or if you decide to go uh, shard, which is a great uh, shard to rush, because it creates four serpent wards. Serpent wards as an ability uh, creates 10. So you don't get half, but you get 40% of the value, right? And when it comes to solo killing supports, 14 serpent wards will evaporate any range support. And so yeah, he gets yoinked here, but easily could have solo killed the disruptor here. That's clearly what he was intending to do, uh, but whatever. Hex plus the hook is good enough. It will get the kill on the Disruptor and they are chilling. So there's one thing I'd actually like to suggest for Eki to improve on his Shaman, which is taking advantage of the damage amp of Hex. So for the longest time, for all of Shaman's existence, what you would do is you'd lead with Hex because it has no cast point. Shackles does have a cast point, which means it takes time to use the ability. It's a very small period of time, but it takes time. And so when you go in, it's normal to Hex so that they can't react. For instance, the Slaughter might have BKB. This game, he does not. And this is the example I'd like to propose. If you are picking someone off, if they are isolated, they are completely alone, and they do not have an ability that is an instant stun or a BKB or an Orchid, something along these lines, they have no instant uh, disable to stop you from shackling them, you should shackle them and then hex if you're setting up for your team. So for instance here, the Storm zips in, and he leads with Hex, as you naturally do. And I get it. He's blinking close to the Slaughter. You don't want to get stunned here. But if you can help it, you should Shackle first. And this might seem crazy. Why would you Shackle first? Well, if you Hex first to close the gap for your team, you lose the damage amp. And so I actually think if people understood the difference between like a team fight where you kind of have to instant Hex just so they can't react, so their teammates can't necessarily like help them in some regard. I guess even in team fights, right? If you're truly initiating, Maybe you would want to shackle first, right? If you're actually the one going in first. Usually in teamfights, you're going in second because you'll just kill yourself if you go in first in Shaman. It's There's a lot of bad Shaman players who just hardcore initiate, but yeah, they completely lose the, the damage amp. Obviously it does not matter here, but that's besides the point. We're trying to optimize guys. And so yeah, if you're, if you're finding someone isolated, lead with shackle to help your team close the gap and then hex afterwards. The only problem with this, once again, is if they have a BKV, 
and you try to shackle in a hex, they can click the BKB in between, right? So do not do this if the person has a BKB or a hex or an orchid, right? Do this if these don't exist. I know this is kind of complicated, but I, I really think it's an important point to optimize the broken 35% damage amp of Shaman. All right, and I like how he plays this team fight here, which is just leading off, sees the void bottom. Anytime you see someone uh, like a, a four on five, you can just drop the initiation. Even if you're gonna die, if you're setting up a four on five fight, it's usually a good idea, right? So that's what he does here, leads him with the hex. Doesn't go for the shackle. And I, I actually like the reason why, because he'll probably just die, right? If you go on the first person with hex and then you stand there for four seconds shackling, you will likely insta die. Now I said before, it's kind of okay if it's a four on five, and that is true. It'd probably be fine if he did die here right in this situation. But a lot of the time, especially if you're a bit unsure or you're initiating to a five on five, it's better to hex and then walk away, right? The reason why is now you can find a good angle with your aether lens to just find a nice uh, shackle. That sets up for a kill on the disruptor who they then stop from getting off a good static storm, right? So find a nice go. Then he does make the aggressive play to blink in here. There is no reason to. Uh, this is actually a big mistake from him, right? Uh, like. I have all good things to say about Aki besides, you know, this was just a mistake because if you can stay on a high ground, if you can stay next to your team, like closer to them and further away from the enemy, right? The enemy is going to come from here or from here. This is your safest place. And he could have stayed there with the Aether cast range, easily could have stayed there. No reason to blink on the low ground. He was just probably unsure if the storm pole would bring the slaughter in range. So made a bit of a mistake, ends up getting him chronoed. Uh, obviously, if he was on the high ground, Void would have thrown the chrono up the high ground but still, then he would be on the high ground and be completely safe from any follow-up after the chrono, right? So yeah, ends up dying because of this. So definitely guys, stay as far away as possible. If you're gonna initiate, lead with Hex and Kite. Don't Hex Shackle unless you have a BKB. Hex, Kite, right? If it's a pickoff, you can Hex Shackle. If it's a team fight, you should just Hex and chill. Unless you are going on someone with a BKB and you know that Shackling them for one or two seconds and then dying will get them killed but it's worth it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know I'm probably saying a lot of things where you're like, oh, this is so much speed, but this is what it takes to become a top tier player. You have to understand these differences. Otherwise, you're just gonna botch a lot of initiations or feed when you shouldn't. At level 15, you get a very good shackles duration. At level 20, generally take hex breaks if there's even a decent thing to break. And then at level 25, you take either shock damage. Certain words, attack damage is one of the most underwhelming 25 talents in all the game and people take it only if you have Ag's Refresher. That is the only justification, and I do not like Ag's Refresher Shaman at all. It is way too greedy. You should have BKB and an Octarine, or BKB and like Glimmer or something like that. Just <laughs> stop buying Ag's, it's so terrible. And yeah, this clip, I'm gonna end the video here just because this game is kind of a washer. It's a 20k lead a minute 29, but look at this. The Hex Damage app, you see it in clips like this where people literally explode. Gets the Hex on the Void, Zip, Fable, Hook, just evaporates. Like, literally people evaporate from thin air. But okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, and consider subscribing to the Game League website where I'm posting, literally I'm posting, I think I've made like five videos for the website in the last few days. Uh, just posting a lot of high value professional content, build content, um, you know, heroes to try content, just whatever you'd see in here on YouTube, minus patch videos like specifically like here's the patch here's what's in the patch uh go check that out sign up down below right now i'm excited to see you guys over there and yeah peace